now. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Mike again. So I wanted to get back in touch Maurice, Mauricio. Hope yeah. I said it at that time. And he had a really cool experience. Uh, he was able to do a service robot hackathon, a virtual hackathon uh, for service robots. I think it's the first service service robot hackathon that I've heard of. That's right. And virtual and throughout the world. So can you kind of just talk about what your role was and what you did and some of your experiences? Yeah, for sure, Michael. Yes, first of all, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here with you talking about this, uh, this amazing world that is uh, on robotics and especially speaking about service robotics. And that's, that's why I think that this, this kind of hackathon was, uh, was one of a kind because uh, this is the first uh, global service robotics hackathon, you know, and we are very used to see plenty of hackathons across the globe with, with, with several topics, but this one it was especially focused on service robotics, which is the first one. Uh, and of course, this was a, a, a global a global event. It was organized by a, a Canadian company called Global DWS, which is one of our business partners as well. So that's why they contacted me and say, "Hey, Mauricio, we are doing this, and do you want to be part of it?" And I said, "Of course, absolutely. I I I I'm 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 in." And uh, so my role was uh, was as a judge. I have been working in several hackathons uh, with several roles from organizer as a mentor as well. And this one was a judging one. So it was really, really interesting because I was able to see pretty much uh, all of the, the, the different uh, kind of, uh, of projects. And, and it was really, really nice. So uh, it was a huge success in the, in the, in the, by, by saying this, it's because it was a, uh, well, it was held from October 2nd to October 5th. So it's pretty much a couple of weeks ago. We got uh, people from more than 100 cities across the globe involved in, in, in the hackathon. So, which is very, very representative. And one of, the, one of my main uh, uh, objectives and, and concerns as well is, is that, well, is it, really going to be a global one or is it going to be just uh you know a, a, a north american maybe some kind of europe uh but but i was surprised that well we we got uh attendees from all over across the globe uh, from the uh, northern and southern hemisphere so it was it was really nice the, I, we got more than 350 hackers so it was a really good audience as well and uh I was I was very surprised. I was very surprised because we have a very representative groups, and you know it, it was uh, one of the main concerns was for for example the language. Uh, if all of the speakers are going to to, to talk uh, English, but well, uh, the, the the organizers work uh, that part really well. They 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 provided several translations. And they 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 did uh, an assessment on on every single entry, so they were able to to build a representative teams on which uh, they make sure that uh, they will be able to communicate. And uh, well, they invited people like me from from Mexico, so I I I, uh, I was previously contacted by by some teams. So there were a couple of teams from Latin America. So I was just uh, saying, do not worry about the language. We will support you while you are there. So it was really nice, really nice experience. Pretty, pretty much. Uh, it, it was different to another hackathons, and 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 I think that that's 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 really cool because uh, we need a, a new platform, new ways of doing these kind of things. And of course, one of the main one of the main uh, challenges that we have on service robotics is the awareness, the awareness about this. So it, it was really cool, Michael. Okay, cool, cool. So you brought up an interesting point. And so when you try to go global and do global conferences, um, I'm really bad. I, I can't, I'm, I actually took Spanish in high school. But if you started talking Spanish right now, I would have no idea what you're talking about. Because I, I, I don't use it. I used it in the class in high school, and I've just basically forgotten almost everything. So um, you bring up an interesting point. 
one of the things I have noticed in tech conferences that I've been to is that they basically they use English as the common language. Yeah. But it would be nice. I don't know if there's a Zoom function or uh, uh, other, like there's other uh, virtual conference software. It would be cool if they could do some kind of subtitles, you know, uh, yeah. language that, that you know the best and do subtitles during that meeting. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Do, do, doing that, uh, it is not possible doing that on, on real time, real time translations. But uh, for example, when, when I, 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 I organize several conferences, international conferences across Latin America. And what I do is to actually hire uh, real time translators. That's, that's a specific job. So you can be a translator, but maybe you will not be able to do the real time stuff. So you need to, to hire uh, those, those specific guys. And we have been exploring to bring uh, real time translators to some meetings and that kind of things. And it, and it should work. So you can, you can have, uh, of course, it's, it's kind of a bridge in, in the audio. So you will have the real time translation, uh, translator listening and, and, and actually seeing the speaker. And at the same time, the, the translator is going to speak and it will be broadcasted to, to, to all of the, let's say it's the Spanish uh, channel or the German channel or something like that. So uh, technologically speaking, it's, it's feasible. So, so, so you can do it, but it's, it's not, it's not as, as easy as I will just uh, press these kind of things. And I think that these are the kind of uh, services that we are expecting in the, in the near future. Of course, it, we need a much more mature AI stuff, but I think that all of the all of the tech guys in Zoom or in WebEx or that kind of platform, I think that they are really, really working on that because even 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 from now on, it, this is going to be it, it looks like the business as usual, you know? Right. Oh yeah. So so kind of go into I don't know what were your I don't know if you, there's certain things you can't share about the con, uh, contestants and what they came up with, but could you kind of go into uh, what your responsibilities as a judge were? Uh, and then if there's any uh, like cool ideas that you saw that, uh, that you can share about what people were coming up or maybe not specific ideas, but like a, a, a concept or a, a trend or something that you saw and what people were, were working on. Yeah, yes, for sure. Well, I, I, as a judge, I was, I was in charge with, well, well, first of all, uh, uh, any kind of feedback was uh, very appreciated. So it doesn't matter if you were a judge or a, or a mentor, just prior, several weeks prior to, 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 to the hackathon, we start uh, discussing these kind of things. Okay, how's it going to work? Uh, how many attendees from, from which kind of countries, languages, how are we going to handle that? So we use a collaborative platform and, and uh, we start exchanging ideas so over that platform. Uh, and after that, uh, uh, the, the, the organizers start uh, uh, doing all of the, writing all of the procedures. So I think that, well, it's pretty, pretty much logistics are complex. And especially when you have people from across the globe and several time zones. And as a judge, I was in charge of, of course, uh, knowing uh, exactly who is who is uh, on on the hackathon, how many groups do we have, uh, and after that, uh, then we divided uh, as, as 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 a judges. So we we had several groups of of, of judging, and uh, we started assessing specific projects. So I wasn't able to to score all of them because, uh, of course, it, it is you know hackathon is is always a, a short short short, short uh, term, but in this case it, it was really nice because. Uh, we started on Friday, so it was Saturday, and then Sunday, uh, all of the 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 the, the, the groups work uh, work it, and well, there were some uh, some uh, some sessions, uh, some um, conferences. Uh, some of them were 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 delivered by people who is in the service robotic industry. Some of them were not. So I think that we have a different focus on that. And after that, on, on Monday, then uh, all of the judges start, started working really hard, really hard. So because we announced the winners uh, Monday afternoon. 
So uh, that that means that 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 we had four days, and and uh, normally it is a three days hackathon, and it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then that that's it. So we have plenty of time for for doing that, and 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 that's because. I think that one of the main challenges as a judge is, is to being objective, you know? It is kind of, uh, well, you have uh, 350 attendees, uh, and well, how can we assess all, all, all of the uh, efforts from different perspectives? So uh, by doing that, by adding a Monday, I think that that was really, really good for us. Uh, it gave us uh, mo mo much more time. So we have pretty, pretty much around eight, seven uh, hours to, to, to assess the different, uh, we have a first round and after that we have a second round with the finalists and after that we just uh, came up with with, uh, with the, the final scores and uh, I saw several kind of, of projects, you know, it's on every single hackathon that's, 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 that's challenging because you have teams that arrive very mature because you know that this is not exactly an idea that came out during the hackathon they already have uh, this idea and they maybe have some some uh, some MVP ready in order to show it to, to, to the judges. So uh, sometimes I, I, I find, not specifically on this hackathon, but it's, it's unfair on, on most of the hackathons because you see these kind of differences. There are some some teams that they just uh, got along together the, 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 the day prior and they started the discussions and they came with uh, really cool ideas but they are very basic ideas, so they, so they are not focusing on, on, on addressing a specific thing. So this, is, this was pretty much the case in this hackathon. Of course, we saw some teams that were really unmature with some cool ideas. Uh, uh, I, I was able to see, I was able to see that there were some, uh, some teams that arrived to, to next stages. But when we assess it as, as, as judges, I said, oh, that's a very cool uh, project, but I don't see what's the relationship with service robotics, you know? It's pretty much on, on AI or, or, or some kind of, uh, of product or service uh, based mainly on AI, but not on service robotics. So that was something that we as judges uh, was considering. Why is that? Because of course, we didn't want that. Maybe if you presented this, this, this project in a, in a previous hackathon with, a, with another uh, uh, you know, another topic, then you arrive with the same project here. So it's not going to be successful. And at the end, I, I, I was uh, I was very pleased. I was very pleased with the outcome because we were able to, to, to discuss uh, all, all, all of these kind of things with, uh, we were judges of, of course, well, it, it was me from Mexico, but we, we had judges from, from Dubai. We had judges from, uh, from well, you know, it's pretty much Middle East, Europe, and, and, and North America, USA, and Canada. So it was, it was uh, as well, uh, we had a very representative team, global team. So uh, that allowed us in order to interpret, uh, that allowed us uh, to interpret uh, several, several kind of ideas that local teams has. So it was really nice. So uh, we, we, we can, of course, uh, talk, for example, the first place, it was a, a, a project uh, focused on healthcare. And this team was mainly based in Australia. So they came up with a, a wheelchair project. So it is like, uh, you know, you have a service robotics uh, sensors where you have the computer vision, you have the SLAM technology, you have everything, but uh, built it in a wheelchair. So it was really, really cool, really nice. That, that, that was the, the, the first place. And I think that well deserved. It was well, well deserved. The second one uh, was a team who is uh, based in uh, El Salvador. I don't know if, if, if you, if you, if you uh, or your audience know exactly about the Salvador, but Salvador is a very, very small country in Central America. And one of the key things that we saw, all of the judges saw, is that, wow, it, it is, it is I, I will say that it, it has uh, additional points in the sense that El Salvador doesn't have the same kind of access that we are used to have on, on, on technology. And uh, in this case, Mexico, by being uh, so close to, 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 to you in the US, I, I think that the frontiers and, and our uh, treaties, our, our, our international treaties are, are, are pretty well set up. So, so we can exchange uh, technology. I have here uh, the, the same uh, robots that, that, that you have over there. 
But for the rest of, of Latin America, it's, it's not that easy. And that's the case for, the, for El Salvador. If you, you, you can just simply ask for, uh, for Amazon to, to the, please send me a, a leader sensor. That's, that's not the way it works. You have to, to look for it, maybe do, do additional efforts. And what those guys built is uh, uh, they built uh, 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 modular robots. How with modular robots you can teach STEM on education. Oh. And it was, it was uh, pretty much focused on, 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 um, on, uh, on uh, low income uh, uh, sector, you know. So it was uh, students, uh, kids, yes, and, 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 and grow more, more, you know, it's elementary and secondary school. Uh, and you can uh, teach, of course, adults as well. So, you know, what I like it a lot is that they have the technology, they focus this on, on service robotics because they, they have this, all of this sensor and they built a, 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 a it will be a school model uh, delivery on which they have several types of robots and you can exchange the parts of the body in the robot so you can uh, teach on several grades. It all depends on, on the, 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 the level of difficulty that you should that. So it was very, very interesting. Uh, most of the, of the, of the uh, body parts on the robots, robots uh, service robots body parts was uh, made by, by them. Uh, they used a 3D printer. So it was really, really cool. It was really cool. So uh, the, 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 there was a lot of innovation over there. And, and, and considering that they do not have the access, the kind of access to technology that we used to have, so it was really good. And I think that they were, uh, they, they had, I think that they, yes, for me, from all of the teams that I, that I review it, they had the most uh, restricted uh, environment than the rest of the teams that we saw over there. And so they won the second place and the third one, it was a it was a team. Uh, uh, they they brought a solution as well uh, for healthcare. Uh, it was uh, pretty much a, a solution that where where you can uh, uh, it's an AI solution on speech recognition, on which you can uh, configure a, a, any kind of uh, service robot that is for for example on senior homes. Uh, they 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 are uh, analyze, They are listening and 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 analyzing through AI uh, every single talk that a specific senior is having. So, if for example, a senior says, "Oh, I, I miss the music," then they they, they they say, "Okay, right now she's feeling uh, melancholic." So, you know, they are interpreting the signs. So, um, after a, a period of time, they can send this information to their fa to their to their family to the doctors and say, "Okay, we are um, seeing that uh, maybe this kind of person in this week was happy or was melancholic or was sad or was complaining. Something is 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 wrong with their body." So it was really interesting, and they won the the the, the, the third place. And around that, it was pretty much. But I think that. Uh, uh, due to 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 these uh, to these kind of uh, of things that we are struggling right now on the health uh, things, I think that uh, there were plenty of of, of teams that uh, try to to build something around the health the health uh, services. So so I think that that was that was one of the key lines on this on this hackathon. Okay, cool. Uh, so a couple things, sort of related. To what you're talking about in the hackathon. So, uh, <clears throat> some people who know me and some people who sort of know me from the uh, social network and everything have known I've been heavily involved in 3D printing for since I got our hackerspace in Kansas City got a MakerBot uh, mm -hmm. cupcake in I think it was late 20 uh, was it 2000 and um, dang I think it was 2009. Wow. I was like Christmas 2009 or January 2010 when we got a MakerBot cupcake at our hackerspace. Wow. And the reason why I mention this is because I spent hours and weekends trying to get that thing to work. And I really love how 3D printing, because 3D printing has been around for a long time. We can, get, we can talk about this for hours, but 3D printing has been around for like 40 years. Wow. But when it got open source, when all the patents expired in 2009, 2010, when they started expiring, then the DIY movement jumped in and the open source 3D printing started showing up. And what's so cool about 3D printing, and you mentioned it, that 
that uh, Sal Salvadorian. Salvador, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they were ha so they 3D printed out a lot of their parts. And what's so cool about 3D printing is that if you have a friend who has a 3D printer, they can print out some of the parts, not all the parts, but they can print out a lot of the parts for you. And so you can start cloning. So if you get That's one right. person with a 3D printer, they can help you make your 3D printer and you can have so it allows people that have limited access to, like you said, Amazon, Prime, and and Google, and some of the other uh, Walmart and some uh, and uh, electronic stores and stuff. Um, yeah. So they can. I, I like. I, I love that idea. Like I said, I've been doing it for ten years and going to maker fairs and seeing all the cool stuff, open source stuff people are making. I think. Where did it go? Oh. That's good. This yeah. part right here, some people know, if they know me, they know this part. This is my first usable 3D printed part for a robot. This part is actually almost uh, 10 years old now. 10 years, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. So it means that it has 10 years, yeah. And what, 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 what's, what's, how, how do you use that? uh it actually is a shoulder joint for a, a biloid robot good good uh, so the servo connects here okay and then connects yeah. here and it pivots and then turns on that joint yeah so but i mean i know we kind of got off a little bit of a tangent but i love the the idea about how 3d printing has allowed people that have limited access to equipment and stuff to That's basically right. make their own stuff now. Yeah, so that that, that was uh, exactly a highlight on 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 the on the Robocon uh, on the hackathon. What what I saw is, okay, what we need we, we need ideas, but not only ideas, ideas that that can actually go further. You know, it's not exactly that. I, I just build this robot and I will bring this to the classroom. No, this guy says, okay. First of all, it is modular. What does this mean? That you can use the same part for building three, four, five different kind of robots. Second is that we are talking that we can just start replacing this business model across the country if we want. You just need a, a, a 3D printer on the other on the other part of the of the country on the other side of the country, and then uh, you can actually start uh, uh, start a new robot classes on the other side of the country. So that's that's exponential, you know, and that's something that that you are really looking for, as especially as a judge. It's, it's not only a, okay, this is a nice project and a nice to have, and it's going to be a one robot and that's it. Yeah, what, what, what about going out and, and doing this in, in a broader sense? So yeah, that's a, that's a highlight, yeah. Yeah, so, the, so what I love is, uh, uh, so I have some few friends in Japan who are big into 3D printing. And what's so cool is I don't have to uh, physically, I don't have to, uh, you know, old fashioned way, I don't have to send them stuff in the mail or through shipping or anything. So. Uh, and the same for them. They don't have to send me anything. They can have, they can use whatever their favorite uh, 3D design software is. That's they can make cool. a part, and then they can send me uh, electronically the 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 STL file or the STEP file or what, however format it's in. Yeah. And then I can uh, easily, with uh, one of my 3D printers, uh, just print it out. And I can do the same thing. I can send them something, and they can send me something in the mail, and it's instantaneous. Um, and then we can play around with it, iterate it. It's it's a it's a cool way to. Uh, I I mean, it's been so cool seeing that slowly develop for the last what about ten years now, where uh, that sharing and open source, and you can. There's lots of different platforms, open source platforms, where you can put your designs out there and you can iterate them. Um, That's right. I mean, I, will, I know we're getting off a little bit of a tangent, but oh, where'd my mask go? <laughs> but I was able to, uh, uh, this is a great example. So I was able to. Oh, yeah, I saw it on one of your videos. Yeah, that's that's really good. So this is a yeah. Perusa. We came up with this idea, Perusa printer, uh, uh, but they developed this, this face mask. So this is all 3D printed. And then when uh, PPEs were in such short supply, 
I was able to 3D print these out for my, myself and my friends. The only problem is, is that uh, shipping on a uh, filament, yeah. everybody was buying filament and everybody was running out or was taking weeks and weeks to get it. Yeah. But at least uh, in the early days when PPEs were in such short supply, I was able to uh, print out stuff for myself, for myself yeah. and friends. Uh, but I know we kind of got off on, but yeah, I, I, I love, I love talking 3D printing and, and some of the cool things and it's, uh, it, how it's helped people. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the last two and years. I, yeah. And I think that one of the, of the coolest things in, in this kind of hackathons is, is, is how we are starting to see all of, all of these different uh, types of technologies are just getting and getting and getting closer, you know? And it's like, oh, okay, and you have the service. Okay, and why don't you adapt this new arm with uh, 3D printing? Or why don't you just put this new, I don't know, maybe I just get into OpenAI and I saw some kind of, uh, of algorithm and just download it and start testing this within your service road, you know, that's, that's the kind of, uh, and that, that's why I, I strongly believe that these kind of hackathons are, are very, very powerful. And, and these are the kind of things and activities that we must start working uh, together, promoting together. So that, that, that's why I think that this, this topic is very valuable on, on, on this space. So uh, let me see if I can explain, explain this, uh, uh, idea that I've noticed about service robots. So you mentioned differentiating between AI and a service robot and that some teams were doing AI machine learning kind of stuff and then some people were actually using service robots. So one of the one of the one of the questions I get all the time is mm -hmm. oh you can't it's all messed up now. But one of the questions I get all the time is, what is the advantage? I've got this right now. Yeah. Why should I, why should I buy this? And yeah. I have this. Yeah. <laughs> and I know, I know we can't solve that question and maybe not answer that question very well, but, but like you said on some of the healthcare and stuff, everybody has a phone. So, we need to, if you're going to use a service robot instead of a phone, you need to give some advantage to user experience. Uh, That's right. And, I, I, and, and the reason why I've kind of sort of mentioned that is with a phone, I don't think you get quite the interaction, the user experience that you get with a service robot. And you had an example of the healthcare robot where the healthcare robot monitored the, per, the patient or the person and uh, I think an interaction just just something simple as a little face interaction voice interaction uh, the, the physical presence of the robot uh, gives a little more social yeah. social interaction is then with a phone yeah. with a phone app yeah, you know uh, that's that's pretty much one of the questions that I, that, that 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 I got, and I, and, I, and, I, and it's a fair question, especially now that, that is okay. You are arriving with service robot. Why 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 to make this so so complex? Well, I think that there are there are two 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 things I I would like to discuss. The first one is okay. A lot of engineers are are are, are talking uh, about uh, STEM. It's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I have been involved in several hackathons on which they are adding the A word to the acronym is uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And I said, okay, that's that's fair enough. It all depends on on which kind of industry are you are you are you willing to to put this kind of a STEM in. But one of the of the of the, of the main topics that I that I am always saying you just can't discard this is the B of, of business. Uh, and it has to be with a business model. It, it, it is always a business model. So, I, I, to be honest, you can arrive at a hackathon with the, 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 the best uh, uh, product or service based on AI or on service robotics or on anything that, that you can imagine. They say, wow, that's an amazing idea. And how much is this, is this going to cost? Uh, 100,000 uh, US dollars. And it's kind of, uh, 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 really? And do you think this is, can really get it, actually get into the market because that's a brilliant idea, but it's not going to arrive. So 
from, from a starting point of view is, okay, if you are, are bringing these kind of algorithms, AI algorithms into a service road, okay, we first, uh, uh, we, we must discuss, well, the effectiveness of, of this AI algorithm, and on the other side is, okay, in which kind of service robotics, because you can have very small service robotics, uh, and after that, talking about the advantages, one of the main advantages that, that, that I do not see, for example, in a, in, a, in a phone, is that, okay, the, the phone is not going to follow you. The phone is not going to recognize you and say, okay, you are the one that I am going to analyze, so I'm going to be around you all day long, listening to your conversation and trying to even recording your expressions, because that can can help us to, to bring much more information into the algorithm, you know? So. Uh, there, there are several, several, several uh, use cases on which you can, uh, you can say, okay, this is why you, you should invest on this. But, but, but as everything on this, on this, on this, uh, on this economics uh, uh, planet that we are living, that we are sharing, it, it is all about uh, uh, offer and demand. And if you are not going to have the, the enough demand to, to send this kind of technology into the market, then I think that it's going to be useless. Okay, it's going to be useless for the market. Of course, it's going to be a nice to have uh, on this kind of, uh, of communities because you can learn something from them. But what, one of the things is that what I learned on, on, on hackathons, I think that 90% of the hackathons, uh, the things that I learn is uh, things that I must not do. I do not mention, I, 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 I ha no, next time I will not mention these kind of things. Next time I will not do this. Next time I will not use this technology. Next. And you know, that's, those are lessons learned because as you just previously mentioned, how, how much time did you spend on printing your, your, on configuring your first 3D printing? It was, it was plenty of times. And now if, if, if I just get into a uh, 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 talk with you and if you explain to me a basic stuff, then I can save for myself maybe three weekends, you know? And that, those are the kinds that, the, the, of things that are really adding value. And if we are expecting to see one hackathon on, on okay, this is, this is what we are going to do now, I will say, you are going to learn what you do not need to do. Uh, and on the other side, getting new ideas because you, you have brand new ideas and you know your market, you know your society, you know your community, and maybe you can start uh, maturing these ideas on your local community. But this kind of, of ideas that you have right here, nobody, inside the hackathon has it why is that because of of geographics of of uh interest on on so there are so many variables and especially speaking on, on a global on a global hackathon so that's very interesting that's 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 really nice and, and i think that those are the lessons lessons learned that that uh, really offer you the, the the most value and i think that that's why you have so many people willing to to participate and to work in the organization of a hackathon it, it is a non-paid job and it is pretty much okay. You, you, we are not going to pay you anything, but you are going to learn a lot. And that's kind of uh, how those kind of communities are, are starting to grow. And, 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 and this is how all of these communities are, are built. Yeah, it's the, I'm not saying I'm a 100% believer in Agile. Agile for software, I think is, is, is easy to implement, but I'm still not sure about hardware how agile hardware works in agile service robots. Maybe if you make it, it's very modular, yeah. it'll work. But I do like the, the, one of the things, the concepts I like about agile is that you fail, you try to fail as quickly as possible. That's right. So you don't, so you don't waste all your time and money on an idea that's never going to work. That's right. And like you said, hackathons are good. You can bounce ideas off of other people. Other people can see your ideas. And then you can quickly say, oh, my idea is just crap. I really <laughs> thought it was cool. Yeah. And everybody around me thought it was really cool. But when we yeah. started trying to do it, we realized that it's just never going to work. So. Yeah, I think I think that yes, Agile is helping a lot uh, yeah, on the robotics industry and service robotics can help us a lot, especially on on uh, building prototypes uh, on a much more uh, quickly, much more agile way, uh, getting uh, out the, the MVPs, the minimum viable uh, product, uh, testing it fast and knowing, is it going to work or not? It does, does it have some potential? Yes, okay, what I need to change on the next iteration. And I think that that's, that's the kind of philosophy that can help us and, 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 and it's important to take 
from this kind of, of, of uh, philosophies like Agile or Lean or something like that, yeah. So, like you said, we can't solve this and I, you don't have to answer this, but I do think Agile hardware is not easy. Yeah, not at all. Because, because you, what you're telling the customer, you're saying, so you have this really control, uh, cool uh, control board that you just came out with. Yeah. And you, you had the bare minimum control board and it costs the customer, let's say you can make it cheap, but it costs the customer like $20 and then you make a slight change or adjustment and then you tell the customer they have to spend another $20. That's so every right. time you iterate, you, you, they have to buy a new piece of hardware. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure how that, maybe somebody smarter than me can figure this out, but they probably will, but agile hardware, I'm not, I'm not sure about, I'm not sure how it works yet. So. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we need to work on, on, uh, on much more mature uh, uh, frameworks, you know, and that's, that's part of the, of, the, of the evolution. And I think, yes, you know, that's, Agile has been very successful on, on, on every single, uh, on every single uh, country. That's why, because 85% of, of the releases in an organization are, 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 are software. And that's why, of course, if, if that's your, your biggest uh, issue, well, of course, focus on, on these kind of things. But the rest, of course, it, it is hardware, and, and a hardware is, is not as, as, use, as, as, as easy or as conventional as software. So that's, that's, that's why. But I think that the concept is really good. You can use the concept in hardware, but of course, it's, it's, not, a, it's not exactly as, uh, that you can apply this uh, as, as exponential as, you, as, as we have already done that with software, absolutely. But I think that on the, on the AI side has too much to offer, too much to offer. And in this case, the releases uh, of, of, of new AI, AI algorithms into the service robots, I think that that's something huge. And, and as long as you have a, a, a good hardware, a sound hardware, a, a sound configuration within your service robot, then you can start upgrading your, your service robot without or, or with minimal intervention on the hardware side. So I think that that's, that's, that's something good. So that's why I do not, uh, I will not omit Agile on the service robotic industry because at the end, what, what we are going to, to, to end having, we are going to have a, a, a robotics cloud management system, something like that, on which as a service provider, they will see. A lot of companies are already doing that. For example, AWS are, are launching a lot of, of new services. Yeah, a lot of new the services. Robo, yeah, yeah. RoboMaker. RoboMaker, for really example. Yeah, that's a very intriguing uh, uh, platform because they that's have right. version control and you basically, as long as you're a robot, uh, so if you have like 100 robots out there in the world, if they're all connected to the internet, you can push out uh, updates right. and That's you can right. manage yeah. updates. So it's, it's yeah. a really cool idea. Uh, I know AWS has kind of cornered the market right now on the universal, easy to use platform. I know some yeah. companies have their own versions of yeah. AWS RoboMaker, but I think cloud robotics, uh, like I said, cloud robotics, AI, uh, that stuff uh, uh, is going to be huge. It's going to yeah, uh, explode. It, it's going to be huge. And now the industry is moving uh, forward. Even even industrial robots. Uh, I attended to the industrial robots uh, conference in the U.S. It was virtually, of course. Uh, there were several tracks talking about ROS. And that's, that's another thing. Because, for example, you can even have uh, uh, Amazon... Uh, Microsoft, they are heavily investing time, efforts, and money in order to integrate their services with ROS, for example. So you can have from the cloud platform, uh, you can start uh, doing some integration with this middleware that is ROS, so, which is really interesting as well. You know, so, and, and that's where you are going to, to go to, to the Lean, to the Agile uh, philosophies, to DevOps, and that kind of things, and it's, it's, it's going to work. I think that it's going to work. You know, that's, that's why I said that the industries are just getting into the domains are getting closer and closer. But of course, I totally agree. If you want to, make, to, to, to do some changes into the hardware of the robot, it's, it's, it's not as easy as it, as it should be. Because we all know the robot is not exactly a, the kind of product on which you say, okay, this is the one, one service robot and you can sell 100,000 units. That's not the way it works because every single service robot is, 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 is configured and is, and is uh, 
providing value from a different perspective than another customer. So it's, it's, it's a lot of customization. Yes, I think that you can do a lot of customization on the software side, but sometimes you need to do customization on the hardware side. So yeah, it's, 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 it's not as trivial as it should be with software. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. So just to put in a plug uh, for Ross, uh, five, six years ago, I was on the fence. I really didn't understand what Ross would bring to the robot, the service robot industry. But now I, I'm not, I'm, I've seen the light, so to speak. And so Global Maker also has Ross underneath of it. So if, if there's anybody watching this and, and, and all interested in service robots and robotics and in the future, I would definitely encourage you to jump into the Ross uh, bandwagon because uh, Ross 2 is coming out. And like you said, Amazon, Microsoft, a lot of big, huge companies with a lot of money uh, are going means and means into Ross and developing Ross. And um, is it perfect? No, but it, it kind of ties things together. It makes it your life easier. Uh, so uh, like I said, my little plug for Ross. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, it, it can speed you up. It, it will say, okay, you, you can have a minimum, uh, an MVP maybe in one week instead of three, you know, and it's kind of using, the, and, and you, you get back to, 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 to the beginning of our, our discussion, using the global knowledge now translated into very sound and specific uh, products, cloud services, or in this case, ROS platform, and now bringing this on, on a much more easier way into your robotic, uh, robotics world, which which is really good. It's really good. That's what we need in order to speed up. If, if not, we are going to take uh, years and years in order to bring new solutions to our industry. And, and that's something that we, we simply can't afford. And especially right now where we need uh, in the short term, uh, very specific solutions in order to address uh, the, 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 the challenges that we are facing right now. Yeah. Oh, before I forget, there's something I've been thinking about. So on your phone, I think in the future, so this, this phone is becoming more and more like an assistant, a helper, uh, like a secretary or a butler. Uh, just look at the iPhone 12. The iPhone 12, some of the higher-end iPhone 12s that have LiDAR sensors on them. So I think, I may be wrong, I think in the future your phone and your your robot, your service robot, will become more and more similar, uh, and more and more basically dependent upon each other. Uh, and so, so like I said, some people you know don't see you know why should I have a service robot or phone? But I think yeah. in the future it may be that you have both, or you have a combination where you have a butler service robot that follows That's you right. around. And instead of you carrying your phone around, you got a you got a little service robot that walks around and it's basically your personal assistant. Um, That's right. And uh, uh, it monitors you, talks to you, tells you your next appointment. And it's like you're saying that that uh, one uh, that one group that had a, basically a wheelchair. Yeah. So think so. Think about especially as people get older, maybe the mobility is less. So instead of just having a server's robot walking behind you or just in in your home following you around, you have you have the robot can actually move you from place to place. That's right. Uh, uh, it's like in a hospital situation would be great because let's say you need to get an x-ray or you need to get a test done, the robot will come up to your bed or wherever you are and you can get into the robot or the robot can help you get into there. It'll Absolutely. take you to your appointment. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think there's service robots. I mean, you feel probably feel the same way. I do definitely think service robots are a huge opportunity uh, in the future. Totally. Uh, I, I know we keep. I think this is good, but we keep probably getting away from <clears throat> what what happened in the hackathon. But um, um, so. Let me throw you a couple ideas out that I've seen recently. I, since we've talked, uh, I don't know if they came up in your hackathon, but I definitely 
has seen a lot of uh, companies getting into uh, uh, UVC robots. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and one of the advantages of having an autonomous robot or a service robot, the UVC, is that UVC can damage your eyes yeah. uh, and our skin. So if you have the UVC lights mounted on the robot and the robot can then autonomously move around an area, and then it can also, with uh, sensors and stuff, it can just turn the lights on and off. If somebody right, walks right. into the room, Yep. Or somebody gets close to the robot, it'll just turn the lights off and wait for that person to leave the area. Uh, I think that's a huge area, especially for the COVID-19 and limiting viruses of all types. And the other one is the spray disinfectant yes. robots. Uh, seems like a lot of people are also getting into that. I don't know if that came up in your hackathon or not. Yeah, uh, not exactly on the hackathon, but uh, I am I am already exploring on that. I have a, a an adaptation that that this robot is uh, is based on the the global DWS uh, robot. Uh, they have a, a this kind of robot, and I have one in right here with me. It's it's pretty much. I'm going to move this. It's pretty much uh, like it's it's pretty much this one. So okay. you, yeah, you yeah. have right here, and it's an adaptation. You know, it, this is a delivery robot. You used to have some trays over there. And in front, well, this is the steam. We are working on the steam because the, the steam, as, as, as you mentioned before we, we came into air, it, it's, it's, it's very small steam and it's not exactly the, the best one. So we are working on improving that. We have a, a new machine that it's, uh, com it's coming from Italy. And that just, it, it's a much more powerful steam. And right here you have the, the 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 lamps, the UV lamps, and that's right. Yeah, what what you mentioned is 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 right. What we are uh, what what you can do on the on the UV robot side is that uh, you you add sensors, and when you when you feel some kind of uh, movement, then just the lights uh, went 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 down. Because yes, that's a reality. It it, it hurts your skin, your eyes, etc. So. Even if you are behind the robot, you need to wear just a special suit just in case because if you are handling the robot. So uh, I think that these kind of technologies, yes, are going to be used from now on. And I think that we, we, we should just, just start improving the way they are working. The, the best thing on, on these kind of things is, for example, in a restaurant. To just close the restaurant and you just leave the robot over there. And it's just walking or if you are opening and closing some sessions some some sections then you just close one section and then the robot sanitizes while uh, the other people is on the other side and then you know that the, 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 the good news here is that there are some uh, some very effective methods to to, to disinfect constantly on, on an specific uh, on an specific uh, area and that is why because maybe you can disinfect right now but 10 minutes later, it's going to be full of, 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 of bacteria again. So you, you need repetitive tasks. And, and I think that that's why service robotics industry has too much to offer over there, because it is a repetitive task, uh, a dangerous task as well. So if you just send an autonomous robot in order to do this disinfection, it's going to be much more easier. So yes, that's a, that's a big trend. We are already testing that as well. We didn't see uh, a specific... Uh, and a specific uh, team doing that. I think that maybe they, they, they saw, okay, Global DWS is, 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 is doing this hackathon and they already have that. So I, I, I don't, I, they don't came up with, with new ideas. But this is something that definitely a, a lot of people across the globe is, is trying to build. Robots on any kind of form of figures, et cetera, uh, but trying to bring this, this uh, good solution in order to, to disinfect. And this is going to be part of the new normal. So, yeah. So, uh, this is just for, this is my question, and I'm just curious about, so on the steam, is it, is it, so, it, is it really hot? So, when you're throwing out, is you, are you just disinfecting with hot water? Or what are you spraying out with, uh, with the disinfectant? Right, right now, we have two solutions. One is, uh, it's a steam that it ha is disinfected steam, it's, it's water with, with some uh, kind of chemicals and it's disinfecting the, but it's mainly focused on, on the air and that's it. And the second solution that we already have, it's a much more powerful steam on which you, uh, it, it is a fog. It, it's not exactly steam, it's a fog where, where you 
completely fill one, one, one room. And in fact, if you have a window then, uh, and you are on the, on the daylight zone, then you can, you can see the light. That's, that's, that's the, the kind of fog that we have. Of course, if you are using this kind of, uh, of, of, of fog, then uh, you need to be well outside of, 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 of the area. But it, it, is, it is much better because it is a, a heavy fog. So I think the ideal uh, solution to these kind of things, for example, if uh, during uh, night hours, you uh, spray the fog, and then during uh, uh, service hours, you have the robot moving from one way to the other uh, using steam and in isolated areas using UV. So uh, one one solution can't fit or can fix all, all or fit all of the all of the necessities, you know. So uh, there is going to be a mix, and we saw that with the steam. I I I I, I am just like you. I, I I do not trust a lot in steam. It's like oh, okay, it looks nice, nice, or, or you can just put uh, I don't know maybe some kind of additional solution and say okay, we're disinfected, but that's not exactly true. That's not accurate, you know. Yeah, so the the other technology, I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but the interesting technology for the light is, uh, there's probably different terms for it, but I, I know it is far UVC light. So it's a different wavelength and it supposedly doesn't damage our skin or our eyes, but it still, but it still kills the, or de degrades the bacteria or the virus. Yeah. But I, but as far as I know, that's still not quite. It's close. It's very close. But I don't know if it's quite ready for prime time use. That's so, right. Yeah, that's right. And and I, yeah, and I think that we as as you know as 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 tech, tech guys who are working on the service robotic industry, that's exactly what we are constantly researching for. Okay, I, I already have this solution, but no, it's not enough. Now I will add this new solution and then we will add the, the next one. And of course, what we are trying to do is to be modular, to work on their standards, because maybe if they release a new kind of a UVC, like, like, like the one you mentioned, if it comes in, 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 in the same standards like the other tubes, then it's gonna be pretty transparent for us. You know, it's a, it's a, a hardware change, but it, it doesn't cost you anything at all. And you are improving the, the the technology, so that's another benefit of of, of of using international standards, and and that's why I was uh, working very closely. I have been working very closely for with companies, for example, like Global DWS. They got even an award for this kind of robot uh, from the Canadian government because that's something that they 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 need, and they are already using this kind of robot in in elderly homes. So uh, I think that uh, that's something which at, at, at much more points, it's a, it's a more mature product, but it's not enough. It's not enough. We still need to get the innovation done. Yeah, I mean, I like the, I like the ideas of the disaffecting the autonomous robot. So there's, I think there's so many applications you use for it. Just think of uh, restrooms, public restrooms. Yeah. So every hour, you can basically just send the robot or have the robot in the re a restroom and as soon Absolutely. as there's nobody in the restroom it would quickly go around and disinfect uh maybe on an hourly basis and if somebody does walk in it'll just turn off and yeah wait for that might even have a uh, audio you might be able to even have it so if you try to open the door the robot will say please don't come in yet i'm just that's right so i think there's a lot of cool applications for yeah. uh, for for what you're working yeah. on there just the that's right just just imagine uh, uh places where where you will find a locker you will find a locker in a school in an airport in uh, bus stations in you know everywhere there are lockers in, in the gyms so okay if you have lockers okay you are going to open and close sections and um, for specific times and then you just uh, for, during morning this this section uh, now that is uh, you just open all of the doors on the on the on the lockers the robots are just going throughout the the the, the site and then you just close it and then you pass to the next one and you pass to the next one and this is this is pretty much a 24 hour job you know because on 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 airports on on bus stations you know, it's like, uh, wow, there are some gyms that are open 24-7. So it's like, well, you need constant disinfection and it should be effective. And for example, if you just open that or if you just throw fog 
or 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 just the UV. You know, it's 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 it, it, this is something that we are going to 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 use from now on. And there's there's a full potential, and I think that that's why we have been seeing more and more service robots uh, uh, on the industry about around disinfection robots. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. There's so many. Uh, there's so many applications uh, because uh, we have to. I think I've said this before to in other talks, and maybe even to when I was talking to you. We've got to be smarter. I don't know if totally shutting down everything for weeks and months is the best way to go. If we have some strategies, even think about this. I'm not even talking about COVID-19. Let's say we have a flu outbreak. Yeah. Uh, we can, if these robots are in the field working now, uh, we, can, we can keep the spread of flu down. And in the future, if there's another virus or something that shows up, we will we won't be prepared for it. We'll have the robots there. We'll have the strategies there. So instead of freaking out and getting everybody thinking, you know, oh no, it's the end of the world, we've got a we've got something there, and it, and we just continue doing what we're doing. Uh, I I think I think is a good strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. This isn't something that we will we'll end with the COVID-19 vaccine. It's not going to end just like that. No, it's it's going from now on. From now on, it's going to be the 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 the, the new normal. The business as usual is going to be in that way. Yeah. I think I, I, to me, it's just I think we were got kind of complacent. I think this is a good wake up call, uh, and uh, it it'll help us, like I said, in the future. So we won't have. I mean, it to me. If there's a way that we can keep viruses and bacteria from spreading a lot, we should just implement them. Uh, because, as you said, it's, in the future, there could be all kinds of stuff show up, and we'll be ready, prepared, and, and take care of it. And even, even one death, you know, if we can prevent just one person from dying or lots of people, thousands of people from dying over the world, why not? It, I would think it's just obvious that we just do it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. So um, I think another area that, uh, oh, education. I'm glad I wrote it down. I think education, so we, we talked a little bit about how some places are having, struggling with education, don't have all the resources they need. I really think education robots, not only autonomously education robots, are a good, good path, but I think telepresence so you yeah. can have a teacher or a doctor uh, can use a telepresence robots in Venezuela or El Salvador or uh, even a small town in Mexico yeah. it doesn't have a teacher or they the teacher doesn't have experience in that area they could come in with the telepresence robot you could do like a one-hour class maybe or a full day class or a week class where the teacher doesn't have to be there, but they can uh, telepresence come in and, and interact with the students through the robot, through the cameras, and through the stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I am just uh, testing right now. The these are the Oculus Two, so I, I am testing right now. What 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 will happen if if in the near future we maybe we can use virtual reality along with service robotics so I can just manage the robot from where I am. And it could be a, a teacher, it could be a truck driver, it could be, you know, plenty of, of things. So I think that once again, all of these kind of new domains in technology can, can just get integrated. And uh, we are seeing now uh, more and more uh, heavy uh, tech companies investing now on this kind of technologies as well. So this means that there are going to be several applications that can just translate into into these kind of uh, kind of remote controllers, and we can act like just sitting in home, delivering the class, and the robot is the one who is just moving around or doing some kind of networking, etc. So, yeah, I think that that's 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 something that that will uh, come up eventually as well. Cool. Cool, cool. So, uh, before I forget, is there is there anything else that you saw in the hackathon 
that you want to talk about? I think, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that that's pretty much what we have uh, been discussing. Uh, 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 one of the main uh, challenges that we all have, even interacting uh, uh, from home, is 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 to 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 have the the, the right uh, traction and the right interaction with the attendees to those kind of conferences. So it is challenging, yes, but I think that as long as you invest some time before the hackathon or before the conference in order to research who is going to be there, who is going to be involved, uh, to whom should I approach, then you will get the most of these kind of, 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 of networking experiences. And I think that that's, that's pretty much what we are all looking with the international conference, international hackathons. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter if it's going to be virtual or, 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 or on site, uh, but I know that it, when it's on site, you know, the interaction is much more easier. But uh, there is nothing we can't do uh, on the virtual side. So we just need to put more efforts and, and bring the right technology in order, in order to do that. So I think that that's pretty much what I saw and the experience and the interaction was really good in this, in this one. So, so I was pleased about that. Yeah, cool. Uh, so I definitely think in the future, because there's, there's some really smart people that don't have the ability to travel internationally. Uh, I do think that, I do fully believe that, I, I have a lot of people telling me person to person conferences are great because of the networking and the after hours where you can, yeah. you meet somebody and you say, hey, let's go have dinner afterwards and we can talk for a while. I definitely see there's, uh, an in-person conference is, is great, but I think there's always should be in the future should be a virtual part of the conference where people who don't have the opportunities or the means can still be involved. Because there's a lot of smart people out there that just, for whatever circumstances, they just can't travel internationally, money, whatever, health reasons, whatever. Yeah. So I, I do hope in the future more conferences embrace the, the in-person and the virtual and kind of try to make them both work together. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, absolutely. I think that this is, this should be uh, something as considered as a best practice on delivering a conference. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's physical, it should be a best practice. Uh, after, or, or you have a specific uh, hour sessions for, for broadcasting, for, for broadcasting uh, uh, attendees, you know, some kind of, of things. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice idea. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really curious to I'm going to try really hard to experience as much the CES as possible this year because it's all going yeah. to be virtual. Me uh, too, yeah. And see how that works. Uh, and uh, somebody said, oh, yeah, Zoom. So Zoom is kind of the new Xerox. Uh, yeah. It's a new trade word. So Zoom is a company, but now everybody basically is saying we're going to have a Zoom virtual conference. We're going to have a Zoom meeting. Yeah. Zoom has become just the generic term now for virtual. That's right. Yeah. Today, a couple of hours ago, Satya Nadella, the head of Microsoft, just announced that they will be powering CES 2021. So it's going to be with uh, Microsoft technology. And the trend is that you are going to have a virtual set. It's not, it's not a video conference. It's not going to be that like that because it's not going to work. It is, you have virtual sets. And I have been experiencing some, some, some virtual sets uh, so far in, in some conferences and, really, and they are really cool. Of course, considering the size of, of CES, uh, uh, it's going to be much more challenging. But I think that that's why they are partnering with Microsoft. Today, Satya Nadella announced that they partner uh, they both partner in order to 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 empower CES 2021 virtual virtual sessions. That's gonna be that's gonna be huge. Yeah, it's something yeah. to to follow. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so so I just did a couple weeks ago. I did a virtual conference from uh, 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 Science Fair in South Korea. So I've been having getting more and more experience in this, and it's it's kind of interesting. Uh, but just a side note, I'm not, I'm not pointing anybody out or pointing fingers at anybody, but if you do a virtual conference, please, please record as much as possible. Yeah. 
and then share as much as possible. It's so easy to share videos now. There's so many platforms, Facebook, YouTube, even Twitter and Periscope and TikTok yeah. and LinkedIn. So like I said, I don't want to play figures at anybody, but if you do a virtual conference, please record. Yeah, like I'm yeah. like I'm doing right now. I'm recording this and I'm gonna put this all everywhere, all my Absolutely. channels. Because I'm having a lot of fun doing this and I would just I would do it even if it's not recorded and just talking to you and learning new stuff. But sharing, you know, sharing the uh, conference, a virtual conference, it's so easy to share it online. You don't have to do it during the conference if you don't want to, but definitely after the fact, have highlights. Yeah. yeah. Have important things, have the, like the award ceremony for your hackathon. It'd be yeah. great if you had the award ceremony so that people could see the teams that won and the yeah. teams that won would get that gratification. Hey, not yes. only did I win, everybody around the world knows who I am now, what I did, yeah. and, and they could, you know, they can see it. So, yeah, absolutely, I agree, I agree, and I think that that's some of the things that uh, uh, all of the conference, including Robocon, should, should should improve for next year. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cool. All right, so uh, I'm pretty sure that's all the questions I have. So, like again, I, I just want to make sure that. If there's any topic that uh, even if it's not related to the hackathon, it has to be with robotics or stuff. I know you're no, I, yeah. drones I, now. Yeah, I think that we oh, we we were able to mention several uh, technologies like 3D and like ROS and like RoboMaker, you know, and that. So I think I am very pleased with with this conversation. We 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 talk it around several topics, not only around Robocop, and I am very happy on that side, my colanas. As, as, as usual, I, I, I really appreciate the time and it's always a pleasure to, to, to talk with you about these, these, these topics on which we both are very, very passionate. So it's, it's, it's always good to talk with you. Very cool. Okay, so we'll say goodbye to everybody and stop recording now. So bye, hope to see everybody you, in everyone. my next video.